I believe this is going to end the same. And, you know, people are going to lose a lot of money. But I, you know, someone asked me yesterday, you know, but, but you're not short. I'm like, no, I'm not. I learned my lesson back in 2000, uh, you know, trying to short companies like MicroStrategy and Cisco. And look, Julian Robertson shut down the largest hedge fund in the world at the time. So let that hang in the air for a second. It was a $20 billion hedge fund back when $20 billion was a lot of money. And he literally wrote a letter to clients saying, I don't understand. Companies that don't make money should not. And these guys do make a little bit of money. But this company sells at 44 times revenues. Fannie Mae economists projected in a revised forecast that stagnation in the housing market could last into 2024, whether the economy avoids a recession or not. Regardless of whether a soft landing is achieved over the coming year, we expect existing home sales to stay subdued and within a tight range, they wrote. Existing home sales have already tumbled 2.2% in July from the previous month to an annual rate of 4.07 million units, according to new data released Tuesday by the National Association of Realtors. On an annual basis, sales of previously owned homes are down 16.6% when compared with the same time last year. Substantially higher loan rates, a direct result of the Fed's rate hikes, have made it harder for Americans to afford a home or a car, or for businesses to finance expansions. At the same time, items like rent, restaurant meals, and other services are still getting costlier. Core inflation, which excludes volatile food and energy prices, has remained elevated despite the Fed's streak 11 rate hikes beginning in March 2022. Mark Yusko discusses the state of the U.S. housing market, mortgage rates, and other macroeconomic concerns in this video, as we will see shortly. As you now get into the video, endeavor to give us a like, subscribe, and drop your comments below. Enjoy. You know, we live in amazing times. We live in a gamified system where, you know, things can stay high longer than you like, except where's AMC right now? Hmm. All-time low. All-time low. If they didn't do the 10 for one reverse split, it's a dollar and 41 cents. Mm. GameStop, almost back to where it was three years ago. So these things do end. And, you know, it's just this one is supported by not day traders, but the, the uh, tyranny of the index fund that Michael Green and, and others talk about. That, you know, every two weeks, a bunch of money has to go in to the Fangman stocks because they are cap weighted parts of, of the indices. And at least for the next seven years, no, how many years we got left? Six years. For six more years until the last of us baby boomers. My wife's the last year of the baby boom. Um, and she's 59. So until the, that that group stops turning 60, no, no, it's longer than that. It's 11, so she's 59, it's 12 years. In 12 years, all of us will be taking money out of the system. None of us will be putting money into the system because 71 and a half, you have to you know, start taking it out. And there's an echo boom that's big, but there's a bust in between. Gen X, Gen Y are not big enough. Gen Z and Gen A are big, but they're young. They don't have any money. And we're going to see what happens when there's a trillion dollars of outflow from these stocks instead of trillions of inflows. Houses and stocks actually look like they're doing well, as long as you don't price them in anything that matters. Like one of my favorite charts is stocks look like they're at all time highs, give or take, but that's priced in dollars. We price them in gold. They're the same price as 1997. They look like that chart you showed of, of mortgage applications. Yeah. Because the money just keeps getting devalued, which in theory makes my house price on Zillow look better. But we've talked about this before. My house doesn't grow. It doesn't get more efficient. It actually wears out. Houses are a, a wasting asset. They're, mm. they're not growth asset. The money gets worse. The slowdown in sales is largely due to the meteoric rise in mortgage rates, which surged to a fresh two-decade high last week. Freddie Mac reported that rates on the popular 30-year fixed mortgage surged to 7.23% last week, well above the 5.55% rate recorded one year ago and the pre-pandemic average of 3.9%. It marks the highest level for rates since 2001. In addition to locking out many consumers due to affordability constraints, the spike in mortgage rates is fueling another problem in the housing market, limited supply. That's because sellers who locked in a low mortgage rate before the pandemic began have been reluctant to sell with rates continuing to hover near a two-decade high, leaving few options for eager would-be buyers. Mark Yusko now further expands on this, stating the possible future of the housing market in the U.S. The housing index is down, and then they also do an affordability index and and this you know this was a little 
cheesy, but they they did uh, a thermometer, like green to red. The whole country was red. I mean, affordability has has fallen off a cliff, and, and you and that's what this this applications purchase applications drop is telling you, right? Is if you're in a home, great, you can you can afford it because we had that that 13 year period of stupid policy where we took interest rates to zero, even though we didn't need it. And we basically just stuffed people into homes. Okay, fine. But then you do the fastest rate increase in history, which, okay, you know, Powell can claim a lot of firsts in history. This is the fastest rate increase in history. And we're right back to where we were 20 years ago. The difference is housing prices aren't the same as they were 20 years ago. So that's, that's your point on the chart. Now, the only problem I have with your, your first chart is it's a terrible chart crime, right? Mm-hmm. 20 year charts have to be logarithmic scale. They can't be linear scale. So that, that rise looks much worse than it is because mm-hmm. it's just a double. You know, 1,000 to 2,000 is a double, the same as, you know, 600 to 1,000. Well, I guess 600 to 50, only 50%. But um, the, the issue I have is, yes, this is, this is a horrible trend. And it's and it's bad for the average American in particular. And that was probably the point, the biggest point of my talk yesterday was there was this great cartoon and it showed a giant plane, uh, like a double decker jumbo 747. And the top was the elite and the middle of the plane was the wealthy. And then hanging on to the landing gear was everybody else. Mm-hmm. And it said, your, your view of the landing depends on where you're sitting. <laughs> and so... The people land, sitting on the landing gear, they're going to get squashed. The people at the bottom of the plane, it's going to be a little bouncy. But the people at the top of the plane drinking champagne, they are really, they love this guy. He is mm-hmm. their hero because stocks have, have rebounded. You know, NVIDIA is up a lot. They love that because that's what they own. The average person doesn't own any stocks. This is the crazy part. 49% of people in this country don't own stocks. Mm-hmm. That's just a crazy stat. What they own is houses. And houses are falling. And... And, and why are rents sticky? Well, to your point, people who have to move, which is not as much as there used to be because of remote work, you know, there aren't as many people being forced to move. Mm. But if you do have to move, right? Let's say you finish school and you got to move somewhere or, you know, y- your company transfers you or, or whatever it is and, and you have to move. That's who's who's making these, these home purchases. So they're not zero. Um you know, Apple's relocating their second headquarters here to Raleigh. So every house that goes on the market here is getting bought at, at crazy prices because there's 4,000 people being forced to move here. Um, so, I mean, I guess, they'll, I guess they'll, they'll hire some local people, but it's a whole bunch of people moving in. And so I guess the, the part that I'm, I'm really struggling with with housing is if, if your goal is to reverse... And now I'm going to get Sinister Saturday, right? If the goal is to reverse this long, this decades long trend of home ownership and get people to own nothing, right? You won't own a house. You'll rent. Mm. And there was an article yesterday. Um, they call them guppies. There's something about, um, there's a term for it where people, young people have given up hope of ever ho- owning a home. U.S. stock investors are bracing for a potentially volatile September as the market faces key economic data reports, a Federal Reserve meeting, and worries over a possible government shutdown during a month of historically muted equity performance. In September since 1945, the S&P 500 has declined an average of 0.7%, the worst performance of any month according to CFRA. Recent weeks have been volatile. The S&P 500, which is up nearly 15% this year, has retreated more than 4% from its July 31 high as investors reacted to weakness in China's economy and a surge in treasury yields that threatens to make equities less attractive. The market is coming up on several key inflection points at a time when the market is still on edge given the rise in rates, said Jack Janasiewicz, portfolio manager and lead portfolio strategist at Natixis Investment Manager Solutions. The U.S. non-farm payrolls report kicks off the month next Friday. A hotter-than-expected employment reading for August would likely revive inflation concerns, while a much weaker number could fuel worries that the Fed's interest rate hikes are starting to crack the economy, Janice Ewicks said. Consumer price data due on September 13 needs to walk a similar tightrope to satisfy investors. The Fed's monetary policy meeting on September 20 stands as another potential source of volatility. Friday's speech from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell in Jackson Hole fueled expectations of another rate increase this year, though a move in September was seen as less likely. 
It's looking like a time to sell the offense and buy the defense if you think that September is going to be a little more volatile than normal, said Sandy Villar, a portfolio manager at Villar & Co., who has been moving into healthcare stocks such as Pfizer and Abbott Laboratories. Investors will also watch what happens with roughly $82 billion worth of student loans held by the government whose payments will begin in October. This could sack consumer spending ahead of the holiday shopping season. Meanwhile, a feud over spending cuts between hardline and centrist Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives raises the risk of a fourth federal government shutdown in a decade if lawmakers cannot reach a deal by September 30, when funding runs out by the end of the current fiscal year. What do you think would be the worst-case scenario for the U.S. if the targets are not met? Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.